Ten different 1970s quarterbacks totaled 16 seasons of at least a 90 quarterback rating. In the 2023 NFL season, 18 quarterbacks had at least a 90 quarterback rating. More on that later. The quarterbacks are featured in this video from the lowest rated to the highest. So please watch to the end because the top rated quarterback may surprise you. 1975 was Len Dawson's final NFL season and he capped it off with a 90.0 quarterback rating. He only started 5 games but played in 12. His 66.4 completion percentage led the NFL and it was the 8th time that he led his league in that department. At his retirement, he was the 3rd highest all-time passer with an 82.6 rating. Otto Graham and Sonny Jurgensen were number 1 and 2. In 1973, the NFL created the passing category called quarterback rating. Computation of the rating is so detailed that the NFL issued a 36-page pamphlet to explain the system. The highest quarterback rating through the 1980 season is Milt Plum's 110.4 in 1960. Plum was a second-round draft pick out of Penn State in 1957, and his 60.4 completion percentage in 1960 was the second of three consecutive seasons that he led the NFL in that category. He had the 20th most passing yards in NFL history when he retired after the 1969 season. Bob Greasy's outstanding 1971 season led the Dolphins to the Super Bowl. His 145 pass completions was 11th best in the NFL but he made them count, as 19 of them resulted in touchdowns, second best in the NFL. Four categories are factored into the computation of a quarterback rating. To achieve a maximum rating within each category, a quarterback needs to meet or exceed the following benchmarks. In 1972, the Colts sold Earl Morrill on waivers to the Dolphins, and it was a fantastic pickup. Earl was getting long in the tooth, but he still had plenty in the tank. The Dolphins were his sixth NFL team, and he had varying degrees of success with those teams. He started for the Colts in Super Bowl III in a losing effort, and two years later he substituted for an injured John Unitas in Super Bowl V, which was a winning effort. He backed up future Hall of Fame quarterback John Unitas in Baltimore, then future Hall of Fame quarterback Bob Greasy in Miami. When Greasy went down, Morrill was ready.
Sonny Jurgensen was 36 years old when he put up a 91.5 quarterback rating. He led the NFL with a 59.9 completion percentage and had 23 touchdown passes against only 10 interceptions. An outstanding ratio in any season, but especially in 1970. Not surprisingly, there is a strong correlation of having a 90-plus passer rating and finishing quite high in the MVP voting. Nine of the 15 quarterbacks featured in this video finished in the top five voting the same season that they topped their 90-plus passer rating. Four of the quarterbacks won the MVP award. Grant Tarkenton's 91.8 passer rating was the second best in his 18-year career. He led the NFL in passing attempts, completions, and touchdowns, 25, in 1975, his MVP season. Three of the quarterbacks were Super Bowl champions in the year in which they had their 90-plus passer rating. A fourth, Fran Tarkenton, was a Super Bowl participant on a losing team. In all, 13 of the 16 quarterbacks with at least a 90-quarterback rating went to the playoffs that same season. Here's Fran Tarkenton again. In 1973, his passer rating was 93.2. His 61.7 completion percentage was third best in the NFL, and he had an excellent touchdown to interception ratio, 15 to 7, with his 15 touchdown passes ranking sixth best in the league. John Brody was 35 years old in 1970 when he was the NFL's most valuable player and made first-team All-Pro. His quarterback rating of 93.8 led the league, as did his 2.6 interception percentage, passing yards, and passing touchdowns.
Ken Anderson led the NFL for the second straight season in passer rating with 93.9 in 1975. He also led the NFL in passing yards and yards per passing attempt with 8.4, the highest of his 16-year career. Like Len Dawson, Sonny Jurgensen had a 90-plus quarterback rating in his last NFL season when he was 40 years old. He had a career-best 3.0 interception percentage, and his 64.1 completion percentage was the second-best in his 18-year NFL career. It was second-best in the NFL. He played in all 14 regular season games in 1974, but only started four of them. Roger Staubach led the NFL in quarterback rating in 1973, along with putting up the highest touchdown percentage of his career. His 23 passing touchdowns also led the league, as did his 8.5 yards per passing attempt. Ken Stabler was the 1974 NFL MVP, and he led the league in passing touchdowns, touchdown percentage, and his yards per pass attempt and interception percentage were the second lowest of his 15-year career. Raiders head coach John Madden was perpetually concerned, 
but he had the coolest quarterback in pressure situations. wasn't a Raiders game if there wasn't some form of intimidation, pushing, finger pointing, punch, repeat cycle. In 1974, Ken Anderson was one of only four 1970s quarterbacks to post a 95-plus passer rating. He had a phenomenal year as he led the NFL in several key passing categories. In 1976, Burt Jones was one of only three 1970s quarterbacks to post a passer rating over 100, 102.5. He was the 1976 NFL MVP, had the most passing yards, second most touchdowns with 24 against only nine interceptions, and had a career high 9.0 yards per attempt, which was second best in the NFL. Nick Stabler had a phenomenal 1976 season as he led the NFL in quarterback rating with 103.4, completion percentage with 66.7, touchdowns with 27, despite not playing two entire games, yards per attempt with 9.4, which is the ninth highest all time, and touchdown percentage with 9.3, which is the 10th highest all time.
Roger Staubach has the highest passing rating in the 1970s with 104.8. He had 15 touchdown passes with only four interceptions, a career-low 1.9 interception percentage, and a career-high yards per attempt, 8.9. Texas Stadium was turned topsy-turvy in Week 7 of the 1971 season when Cowboys head coach Tom Landry instituted a quarterback shuffle between number 12 Roger Staubach and number 14 Craig Morton. On each play, one of the quarterbacks delivered and ran the play called by Landry. Here's a very revealing chart that indicates how passer rating soared after dramatic rule changes in 1978 designed to enhance the passing game. Oddly, only one passer had a quarterback rating greater than 90 in 1978 and 1979. Roger Staubach's 92.3 in 1979. During the 2023 season, there were six quarterbacks with 100 plus passer ratings compared to only three in the entire decade of the 1970s. Why are passing ratings so high now? Since 1978, the NFL eliminated the bump-and-run defensive technique. Roughing the passer penalties were tightened enormously. Offensive holding was basically legalized. Intentional grounding penalty was greatly relaxed to benefit quarterbacks. Not throwing the bomb at the end of the half or at the end of the game. A strong propensity to throw checkdown passes that are short of the first down marker instead of forcing the ball past the first down marker. And one of the biggest factors is an insatiable desire to pump up passing statistics by throwing touchdown passes from the one or two yard line. Back in the day, they just kept trying to run the ball into the end zone. 